Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and this is Jazz Coordination video number three. If you've already gotten uh, through the first two, congratulations. You probably have some pretty good technique by now. This is a different story, though. This is very advanced, and for these rhythms, you're going to have to really practice a little bit more. So, if you listen to Elvin Jones, Jack D. Jeanette, Roy Haynes, or many of the modern jazz drummers, like Jeff Watts, Bill Stewart, Antonio Sanchez, you'll hear a lot of 16th notes in their jazz playing. Now this is one of the most difficult techniques to get. It's usually the last one that develops as a jazz drummer. When I was a high school student, I was working through the Jim Chapin book, those of you who know uh, the jazz uh, coordination book that Jim Chapin wrote. And at the time, that was the only book that we would use uh, besides syncopation, uh, the Ted Reed book, for jazz coordination. Now there's a plethora of books, John Riley's books, um, there's books by Ed Sof, there's my book. So there's lots of books that deal with advanced coordination for jazz drumming. I would probably get all of those and work through them. Today, though, we're going to be working on my book, page 127 through 128. Now, when you play 16th notes in a jazz setting, you have to be careful it doesn't sound too bombastic or too mechanical. So the whole idea is to alter your ride rhythm just a little bit towards the 16th note. It's not going to lock in exactly, because remember, you're going to be playing triplets as well. But it just has to be moved a little tighter, like this. As opposed to... first way was more 16th based, the second way more triplet based. So if you play basic time with the 16th note ride cymbal, it sounds like this. So in other words, that up note is very close to the quarter note which is great because you want to always think about that quarter note when you're playing the ride cymbal. The quarter note is everything. Everything else doesn't mean much. You could swing, as several drummers have, especially Jimmy Cobb, by just playing quarter notes. Nothing swings as hard as that. And that's what the bass player is playing anyway with a few embellishments. So we're going to do these rhythms, and I'm going to do uh, maybe four bars of time and then four bars of the rhythm so you can hear each line. And then at the end of the video, I'll do both these pages all the way through. So let's start this, and we'll try to do it not too fast. Let's say uh, quarter note equals maybe 128 around there. And we'll put the metronome on 2 and 4, as you always should.
So there you have it. That's page 127, one line at a time. So don't worry about playing super precise, okay? It can be a little loose. It should be a little loose, especially at this slower tempo. But you want some just really interesting rhythms to develop from this. Next, we'll look at page 128, the broken notes. These are a little more difficult because now we're leaving out notes. So we'll give this a shot at the same tempo. One, two, One thing you have to remember when you're playing rhythms this complex is that it's very easy to overplay. You don't want to use them too much. Today I'm playing my bass drum, my snare drum a little bit louder so you can hear the rhythms clearly. But in a regular playing situation, you might not want to do that. So finally, I am going to play these soloistically for you. So I'll play the pages all the way through with the ride cymbal pattern. The tempo will be uh, quarter note equals 130. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Thank you. 
again, here's page pretty nuts, pretty reckless. But you get the idea, all right? So just experiment, but do it at home. <laughs> so don't go on the gig and, and try to play too much. But that's just an idea of what's possible. And I know it wasn't perfect, but these, these are the kinds of things that I practice all the time, trying to get them perfect, all right? And that would be the kind of highlight of your bass drum, snare drum coordination. Now, the next video is going to deal with hi-hat coordination. In other words, instead of playing on two and four all the time. We're going to move that around and get it playing like another limb. So that should be interesting. So we'll see you next time.